What's up you guys? This is Chris with Patch Boy Dar. Patch is for the culture. And in this quick Halloween special, we're gonna take a look at the Brother Persona. We're gonna show you how to load up your USB stick onto the machine. And we're gonna show you how to navigate the Brother Persona screen so that way you can access your embroidery files. If you guys are wondering, I am Woo PS. Check it out, check it out. I deliver ruckus to all you punk mother. In this tutorial, you will need your USB stick, just like this here. Check it out. And if you guys don't have a USB stick, you can always purchase one up off Amazon or you can go to Walmart, you can go to Target, wherever you go, you can buy a USB stick. But when you buy the USB stick, make sure you're getting a USB stick that says 32 gigabytes. If you go over that 32 gigabytes, it may not pull up on your embroidery machine. The next thing you will need for this tutorial is the Brother PRS100, also known as the Brother Persona. Now let's go ahead and dive into this lesson, you guys. Before we get started, make sure your Brother Persona is plugged into a power source. Once it's plugged in, let's go ahead and turn on that power. The power switch is located on the right-hand side of the Brother Persona. Whenever you turn on your Brother Persona, you will hear that chime kick in. Let's do it again so you can see what the screen looks like closely. So when you first turn on the machine, you will see that the screen shows a prompt to oil your machine. Now that the Brother Persona is on, it will play a little slideshow until you tap that screen. If you want to get into all your menus and things, you will have to tap the screen to clear out this slideshow. So let's go ahead and tap the screen. It's going to give us a message, as you can see right here. The carriage of the embroidery unit will move. Keep your hands, etc., away from the carriage. And for those of you who are unaware, this whole mechanism here, this part that moves, is the carriage. So this here, these like arms over on the sides, you don't want to be touching these or have these obstructed in any way before hitting that OK button. We can go ahead and hit that OK button, and you guys will see that this whole carriage will move. There we go, it was quite subtle. It was no big movements. Depending on where the hoop last was before you turned it off, uh, it might have a bigger movement than that or it might just be a subtle little bit of shifting. Now looking at the screen, you can see we got some different icons over here. Starting at the top, this option right here in the upper left hand side, that is for the built-in patterns and designs that are on the Brother Persona. The upper middle, we got some borders. So you can use that to have some decorative borders. Now I haven't really gotten into all of these as I only really use the USB function, but I believe this one over here on the upper right is the motifs. Dropping down, we got some more decorative borders. We got some standard text, then we got some decorative text. Down here in the lower left, we got the files that are saved on the embroidery machine. We got our USB function, and we also have our computer function. This one is nice, so if you have a computer nearby, if you plug it in with your ethernet cord, you can always transfer files that way. But we're gonna be using the USB function. Now before using the USB function, we need to plug in our USB stick. The USB port can be found on the left hand side of the screen. So we got our USB port right here on the top. Let's go ahead and plug in our USB stick. Just like that. And if you got a USB stick that has a little LED light indicator, that's also nice because that will let you know that the USB stick is being read by the Brother Persona. So over on our screen, now that the USB stick is plugged in, let's go ahead and hit the USB button. Now the USB will load up very quickly depending on how many embroidery files you have on that USB stick. There's not much on this USB stick so it loaded up really quickly. After you hit that USB button, depending on how you set up your USB, you might, even, you might have things in folders or you might just have files loaded up on the USB stick. The cool thing about the Persona is when you load up that USB stick, it will automatically put things in alphabetical order once it loads up on the machine. And if you went the route of using folders, you can always select the folder that the files are in. I'm gonna hit customs. And that's gonna show me all the custom files that I have in my customs folder. If you wanted to go back in a folder, instead of hitting return, you can just hit this little folder button right here and that will take you back. So to actually load a file up onto the machine so that the machine will stitch it out, let's go ahead and select a file. I'm gonna use the Wu-Tang logo right here. Once you tap it, it'll say transmitting, and then it'll come to this menu that's not, that has a very subtle difference from the last menu. But you can see that it has a set button, it has a delete button. You also have the return button right there. Not only that, but it shows you your 
kilobytes and gigabytes right here. In the upper portion of the screen, it will show you the dimensions of the file itself, and it will show you what hoops can be used for that particular design. So as you can see, we can use our four by four inch hoop, five by seven inch hoop, or we can use our 5.5 inch mighty hoop, and we can use the larger hoop as well. Over here on that upper right hand side, you will see a hoop with a little squiggly line in it. It's like a blue and transitions to a red squiggly line. If you hit that, it will show us roughly the design within a hoop. And we can always go in and change our hoop size. So that's the five by seven inch hoop. And then this is the four by four inch hoop. Pretty cool, right? And to change those, all you do is just change these little hoop icons right down here. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on that four inch hoop option, which looks pretty good. I might even embroider this onto my costume. And once you're done looking at the visuals, you can always hit okay and I'll take it back to this screen here. Let's go ahead and set this design. To set it, we're gonna hit the set button on the lower right hand side. And now from here, there are some different features. Over on the right hand side, we still have our little hoop button here, but now we also have this minute button. If you press that, it will show you how many minutes this design is gonna take, which is roughly five minutes, depending on the speed that we stitch it at. We have this keypad right down here. This is so that you can move your design anywhere within the hoop parameters. Check it out, check it out. You can move it wherever you want to. If you want it centered, again, all you gotta do is hit the dot right in the middle and that will center the embroidery right into the center. Moving downwards to these menus over here, you got your size button. You can always increase the size or decrease the size. It will only let you increase and decrease a certain amount, so don't think you can get carried away with that. We got the rotate if you wanna rotate the design. There may be situations where you're hooping a garment and the garment will have to be hooped sideways. So it comes in handy that you can rotate your design to fit whatever garment you're hooping up. Next up, we got our color palette. If you click that, it will show us all the different colors. It, by default, it sets to that 64, but you got the 300 color palette and you got a custom thread table palette. Now from this menu, we can literally change the color that we see here on our embroidery file. So, right, so it should already be selected because there's only one color in this design. And if we come down to our palette and we just tap on a different color, as you can see, it will change the color right here. Now, if you had a design that had multiple colors, let's say you had four different colors, you can come into this feature and change each color to your liking. So let's go ahead and put that back into a yellow color. Now I selected yellow here, but you can always hit the reset button right down here. And it okay to revert to previous color changes hit OK, and that changes back to our original color. Another feature is right here, these squares. These squares, you can uh, duplicate the design and make like a cool pattern, or if you're doing multiple of the same design, you can use this feature to add in multiple different patches to see how many patches you can fit on that one hoop. We're not gonna play with that at the moment. Let's just go ahead and hit OK. We got our mirror button, so if you hit this button right here, it will mirror the design. As you can see, the design keeps flipping. That comes in handy sometimes. I don't use it quite too often, but it does come in handy. Now, since I only have one color, you can see our multicolor array and spacing things. These are kind of grayed out. I don't really use all these features. There is a density button, but it doesn't allow me to hit the density button at the moment. There is, is this button right here, where it's two squares and one square is underneath it. That is to duplicate the design, not like we did it with the multiple squares, this single square allows you to duplicate it and move it around individually. The option with the multiple squares, once you duplicate it, you can't move each object individually. They're all stuck together in a grid. But with this button here, the duplicate button, you can duplicate it and move it, the extra design, wherever you want it to be on the screen. On this lower left, you will see that there's an add button. You can always add in multiple designs onto one hoop, you guys. So if you're using the big, eight inch by eight inch hoop, you can get at least, depending on the size of the patch, you can get anywhere from three to four to six patches on one hoop. Since we are ready for the design, all we gotta do is come down here to the lower right and hit embroidery. Now that we hit embroidery, you see the menu subtly change. It didn't do too much of a change, but it did subtly change. Up on the top, it now shows us more of a detail of how long the design's gonna take. 
So it shows us how many stitches we have. We got 2,733 stitches up here in the upper left. We got our time it takes. It's gonna be five minutes overall time. We got the, the number of thread colors or thread changes we will have to make. We only have the one color, so it's only show, gonna show us the number one. We still have our options to move the design within the hoop parameters, but now if we move it, our hoop arm is gonna move as well. But now that we're in this phase of the design, if we press any of these, our hoop arm will move, as you can see. You see it guys moving below? So keep that in mind when you're on this phase, these arms, this bracket will move at this point. And you can adjust the speed at which it moves. So it moves very slowly. That's the medium. And this is the fast, which jumps it pretty quickly. I'll let you guys play around with that on your own. We still got our rotate button. These two buttons I haven't quite played around with just yet. This little thread button works perfectly if you have the same design on one hoop multiple times. If you press that button, it will group the colors together, which comes in handy if you're doing some bulk orders and the colors are the same. I've done this multiple times so far and I have yet to lose any type of stitch registration. They always turn out perfectly. And I usually can do up to four patches at a time if I do uh, multiple patches. Moving down right here, you got your little scissors button with the little thread trim. That's to set your trimming parameters. So as you can see, with our jump parameters on our jump stitch trim on and with our end color trim on, uh, the jump stitch trim is when the stitches go from one point to another, it will cut it. And our uh, millimeters here, this is how far we want the jump to be before it cuts. So if it's five millimeters or more, it will cut. We can lower that down to zero. We can up it to five millimeter, 10 millimeter, 15 millimeter, whatever you want it to be. On my newest brother persona, you can adjust this a little bit more. So instead of it jumping up to five, it'll jump up to like two millimeter, which is nice. So I did change it down to zero millimeters. So now let me hit okay. And zero millimeters, it will just automatically cut it before going on to the next portion of stitching. The next one over, we got our needle minus or plus indicator. You hit that one. This allows you to go forward and backward stitches. It also allows you to go forward and backwards uh, colored threads. Hit okay there. The next one, we got our needle position button where it shows the needle with a red plus sign. And as you can see, this menu over here kind of changed. And this feature allows you to see the parameters of the embroidery itself. So if we hit this upper left corner, this green plus sign is gonna show us the uppermost part of the design. If we hit center, it's gonna put it at the center of the design. If we hit lower right, it's gonna show us the lower rightmost part of the design. And as you can see, the hoop arm is moving as we do this. And typically, if you're doing this, seeing where the parameters are, you do wanna have the, the, a hoop loaded up on the machine so that way you can visually see where it's gonna be stitching out at. Next up, we got our checkered arrow. This is gonna give us a trace. When we hit that button, it's gonna do a complete trace around the entire design. So once again, it helps to have your hoop loaded up so you can see where it's gonna trace out at. I don't have the hoop loaded up, but we're gonna do it anyway so you guys can see what happens. Press that button and it's gonna do a trace. And once the trace is done, it will automatically default back to the center position. Back on the lower levels of the screen, the display, we got our stitches per minute. Right now it's set to 600, but I can take it all the way down to 400. 400 stitches per minute is the slowest it will go. It go next up is 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, and lastly, 1,000 stitches per minute. Personally, I have not made it to the 1,000 stitches per minute mark. The fastest I've gone is 700 stitches per minute, but that's just a personal preference. I don't like my machines going too fast, depending on the design. But you, you guys are always welcome to bump it up to however fast you want it to be. That's all just your personal preference. Now coming down, we got this memory button. We got the memory button right here. And if you hit the memory button, it will allow you to save the current file to wherever you want to save it to. You can save it back onto the USB stick, but since we already loaded it from the USB stick, we don't wanna do that. But it does allow you to save it onto the machine itself. So if you hit that button, 
is going to show saving. The file isn't big, so the save went very quickly. So now the design is literally saved unto the brother persona. And that feature comes in handy if you got a design that is popular. You might want to just go ahead and save it onto the machine itself. So that way you don't have to keep loading up your USB stick. Next up, we have the return button, which will take us back a menu. And we have the most important button, the lock button. This button will stay red and locked until you actually start embroidering. And to start embroidering, you must hit the lock button. And then this button right here will turn green. That lets you know that you can hit this green button and it will start embroidering. It does automatically turn itself off after a couple seconds. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button and hit that subscribe button if you are not subscribed to the channel already. One last thing to do with the brother persona, once you're all done embroidering and you wanna exit out of the current embroidery file that you're on, one thing you'll do is in the upper right hand corner, you will hit the home button. It's the shape of a little house. And the screen will ask you, okay, to cancel the current pattern selection. You want to hit OK, which will get you back to this menu, which will allow you to hit that USB button again to load up a different file. This has been Chris with Patch Boy Darb, Patches for the Culture. We'll see you on the next video. Peace.